What is up, everybody? Welcome back to more Phoenix Red Trials and Tribulation. I am actually still recording this on the same day. I just also finished Mario Wonder, so. January 8th, 121. So we're finally to see the tiger on the trial. We almost got this case one now, Nick. I wish I could agree. Huh? When I cross-examined Mr. Armstrong just now, he said he was just doing what the tiger told him to. But God had picked up on it, remember? He pointed out that without proof, we don't know if, if he's testing out the truth. You mean, you think Mr. Armstrong was lying? I don't know, but if it, that's the line the prosecution takes, we are going to get in trouble now. I don't get the feeling that we're going to have to get have the case-making evidence we're going to need. Hey, pal! Detective Gumshoe! What are you so jumpy about? Your hair is standing on the end. Hey, that's the pot calling the kettle black, little top knot. I'm not the top knot. Never mind about the hair. Just calm down, all right? I I, I can't stand still when I don't have a job to do. I I, I kind of get wound up. Ugh. No kidding. You gotta have something you need me to do, pal. Anything. Well, um, hey, I'm gonna take a jog back to the down to the cream thing. I could get some prints analyzed for you if you got an hour. An hour? The trial will have uh, reconvened by then. But Nick. Oh, true. With Oh, some kind of oh, yeah, we are gonna need it for a trump card. Uh, you said you could get some fingerprints done? You bet! In that case, do you mind checking the prints on these for me? Uh, could you find whose prints are on this? Oh, hey, that's the small bottle I gave you this morning. Yeah, I think it's the last minutes of time you saw this mystery, uh, mystery for once and for all! Justice for all! High time jelly for all! Okay, I'll get it. Off to the lab right away. Just make sure you don't lose the case before I get back. I'll try. Court will now reconvene. I got it. You ready? I haven't even tamed him for you. It was a three cup job. No problem. Tamed him? This guy may be Furio Tiger, but come on. He's pretty lively. Be careful. He still bites. What? Bites? The, the fuck? You can't bite. That's against the law. That's assault. Uh, whatever. Very well. Please show Mr. Tiger to the stand. Mm, don't roar like a dino, please. Um, witness, please state your name and uh... ah! Ah! Oh, I don't know what you're saying, Unless there's room for me down there, too. Uh, you... Who's you say to me? Me? What's you say to me? N -n -n nothing! I didn't say nothing, honest. Who would have guessed that fear would introduce a bad Brooklyn accent in the judge? I got business to take care of, you hear me? Who the hell called me into this hole? Was it you, Spikey? Oh, no, of course not. It was the judge. Y Your Honor! Oh dear, I must have seemed to have dropped my pen. Where on earth is it? Don't mind me, just carry on with the proceedings. That's normal. That's it. We're down. Maybe you didn't hear me. I said, who the hell was it that called me here? There's no need to shout. We can all hear you. What'd you say? There's no point struggling. You're caught in a snare. The relentless snare of the law. And I'm the one that hauled you in. Too cool. Let's start with the basics. You know about the incident in Hush, correct? Incident? I don't know nothing about no stinking incident, mask boy! You mean you didn't attend to the previous trial of Maggie Bride? Maggie who? I got more important things to do than deal with courtroom drama! Of 
course. Well, perhaps you could give us your testimony then? Please tell us about what you did on the day of the murder. Sure. Phoenix Wright? You're the one who set this up, didn't you? You just gotta regret the day you ruffled the tiger's fur. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, maybe I should have brought my typer with me today. Get a quirk, Nick! The tiger's outlaw. I don't know nothing about no murder. I was tied up with a business in December last year. Spent all the time in my office. I got whales lined up to borrow crash from Tender Leather every single day. If you want to check my alibi, just ask the lab. Uh, at least I found my pen. I mean, at last, I found my pen. Very well. What is it? Please, witness, if you can refrain from shouting out like that. I know the kind of games that the guy in the blue plays. That little life ain't no lawyer. He just punches away at stupid details till he wins. Low life? Me? Listen up, smarty. Every time you ask me something that doesn't relate to this case, I'm gonna bill you $500 and you're gonna borrow the cash from me. Uh, that's one long contract I refuse to sign. I don't think it ain't gonna hurt when you tangle with the tiger. <sighs> I love a good spectacle sport. Just, just a minute, that's really not this witnesses. How can I put it? A hungry tiger roaming the urban jungle. Get on his bad side, and he'll bite everyone's head off. Yours too. Very well, I have no choice but to impose a penalty system here. You better be listening. I said I got business to take care of. Big business. If I don't spill now, I ain't gonna catch my butt. Or will impose a penalty for an any irrelevant pressing of. Keep that in mind. Yes, Your Honor. You can do it, Nick. Come out from under there, would you, me, me, me? Loki. Loki's like, I ain't gotta take a kitty nap. Do you have any proof? Yeah, you don't want to cut across them or you be wind up slipping with the fishes. Once the Godfather found out you've been dragging Viola through the mud, he'll do you in. Sorry, I couldn't quite put it all together towards the end there. He said that... Press harder. Mr. Tigre, what do you want? Uh... If you wouldn't mind going into a bit more detail. This is a dead end try. And you know it. Remember the rules. Pressing a witness without evidence is backed up. Ouch, that I mean ouch the pain. Alright, so it's not that. Are you sure about that? We were talking about one month ago, you know. You see these teeth? That's how sharp my secretary is. Sharp? He writes everything in my schedule. December, mainly in the office. That's what it says, so that's where I was. Seems like a rather uh, sketchy schedule. Ah! What do you want? Oh. See, those very minor will of you in this? Yes, well, Tinder Lenders, Mono is. Went through comp being compromised, you know? Went through compromise? What is that supposed to mean? Compromise the customer to win! That's what it means. Got me? With best friends like you, who needs enemies? Here, let me spell it out for you all. You don't pay me back within three days, Spikey. I take what's due in your stupid hair. You follow what I'm saying? Uh, but I'm not one of your customers.
I'm timing three, you hear that? You just better remember that. If I miss that bus, someone's gonna pay. Mm. Well, if we get them rested, no one's gonna I don't want to keep Burst and taking a hit. I don't buy it. Have you haven't heard it? one of that <laughs> You've got a big mouth, right? trying to say I was in the mob hit, isn't that what you're saying? What's your proof, dude? Uh, evidence? Yes, well, for an attorney to make an accusation at court, he must have evidence. That from known shark to lawyer, a beginning guide, yeah. Ah, I see you're in study as tight, Mr. R Tiger, very good. Can't see cloned as me. See what happens if you press harder. Sorry. Mr. T Gray. Does the calendar work? Fuck! Thank you. 
Wow, I did not know I'd be stumped right now. December 3rd. Were you in our office that day? Maybe you ain't listening. Of course I was. I never set foot outside. I had a bunch of all day with a bunch of cats wanting to do a business with me. I ain't never seen that young kid before. Alright. You never saw the kid before, huh? Well then... Mr. Tiger? Or Tigre? You claim you didn't know Mr. Glenn, LG. But it appears Mr. LG knew you. What? Mr. LG left this little note on his calendar. Meet with the tiger. And the date? December 3rd. D December 3rd? That's, that's the day of the murder. So, Mr. Tiger... I submit that you did indeed know Mr. L uh, Glenn LG because of the day very day of the incident you met with him. <sighs> not bad. You said you not bad. Sorry. I was just messing with you. See how good you were. Did you hear that, Nick? He said you're not bad. That's one compliment. I can do without. Plus, he's lying through his teeth. Oh, witness, remember that you're under oath. Lies will not be found. You call me a liar? Is that what you're doing? Is that rural? So you're saying that you claim to have never seen this kid. It's the truth. I said I'm dead serious. You better believe that it's the truth. <laughs> I say that gives me time to enjoy another cup of pure black magic. That is, while you testify for the court again. Oh, yes, would you mind indulging the court again? Uh, yeah, let's nail this puffer. F I mean, let's nail this board. Got him. You saying, totally. I bet that was probably somewhere else. I know, uh, liar. I never met it, uh, Glenn Elge. There was some lame guy with that name. No, one borrowed cash from me. I'm meeting with him at my office. I waited around for him, but he never showed up. I ain't never even been to that Tres Ben joint. He's here. You never been there, huh? Did I tell you I got a big deal going on today? I ain't gonna make my bus n now. We we'll have to take the express train. That bill's going straight to you, White. Uh, if you ever make it to it. Okay, we'll just start. Oh shit, does it take- Huh? Get that cor horse calendar out of my face! I'm the tiger, not a lame horse, you porcupine! Tigers like me eat horses like that for breakfast. No, 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 witness aren't ready to eat evidence not that they ever would. Well, there was a case once where a young lad ate- Anyways... If you had never met the victim before, now how do you explain the note he left? There was some lame guy who won with that name though wanted to borrow cash from me. That's very strange. According to the manager, the 
Firmware, the victim worked. December 3rd was the day he had to repay his loan. He wasn't due to discuss money, but repaying that he owned. Oh yeah, maybe he's right. Whatever it was, it was going down at the beginning of December. So you did meet Mr. Over. Hey, right, you might be... I mean, you want to call your jets for a second? I met up with the guy uh, at my office, Tinder Lender. So your meeting wasn't supposed to be at Tr Trev Smith. Why would I want to go to a dump like that? If I want to talk with my clients, I got an office decked out for my job. I got the best punching bags you ever saw in there. Not exactly a professional office you got there, you know? You, n you were in your office on the day of the question. Away from the ain't ever show up. He didn't show up. Ha! What do you think, Tri? Let's see. How does a dead man get from a French restaurant to a loan shark office? And you yourself didn't go to Trey's Ben. What are you trying to pin on me here? Uh, why don't you just call down to my office and we chat about this thing my way, yeah? I got the best punch bag you ever saw. No, 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 no need. I'm good, thanks. Listen up. I ain't got nothing more to say except this. I ain't ever been to that Triz Ben joint. It's here? Never. You, I mean, not even once. Not even once. I was in my office the day that went down. I didn't put no poison in the kid's cup. The capiche? Hmm. I would forget that he was there. Oh, it's the matches! Mr. Tigray, is there something you'd like to tell the court about these matches? Matches? What are you talking about? We found them in your office at Tenderlander. They're from that restaurant. Why, I oughta! If you were really never been to Tradesman before, that was a book of the restaurant matches doing at your, your desk. You've been snooping around on my stuff now, so wise guy. What are you, my ball and chain? Ain't no broad control of me. Order, order. Well, witness, I think it's time you started telling us the truth, don't you? Ah, sorry, I'm terribly sorry, forgive me. I ain't no pussycat, I don't tell, man, I don't go back on what I say. Well, hey, you will in a minute. But okay, I was at that joint the day. What? But listen good, alright? Might have been there, but I never saw him met the kid. Well, well. Looks like an order just came in from another testimony. Or for another testimony. I was supposed to meet up with this kid at the restaurant. When I opened the door to see the joint, I saw one ugly scene. That guy was laid over the table, stiff as concrete. I figured if the place was already hot, I mean hot already, I was going to split. Hear the cops turns on my way out, and I went straight back to my office. Nobody stopped you for questioning? Tss! <laughs> we know that's a lie, but still. Hold it. If I wait around any longer, I ain't gonna even make the normal express. No more stupid questions. Ha! Huh. No problem. Anytime Trey presses you on something irrelevant, I'll pay. I mean, I'll see he pays a penalty. Mr. Garnet, that's my job. Your job is to slam that little hammer of yours and call a guilty verdict. So do it. Yes, sir. This special express ain't cheap, right? Just so you know, since you was paying. Oh man, doesn't the rule of law mean anything around here? 
I bet I'm gonna get like penalties for like last time. What do you mean? The fucking murder, right? <laughs> no, please. <laughs> please. You trying to tell me you ain't never done? What? <laughs> Square watching. in the afternoon.
Shows how bad I am. What's this, Try A new line of irrelevant question? Get out of four planes. So you were right there. But you can't see the back of the Why that's true. Now look at the uh, look at the plans again. The truth is painfully obvious. I'm walking in and here. So from the entrance of Trades Bin, you could have had seen the victim as feet. But you did see the victim that day because you met with him. That's a baseless accusation. Well, I'm having forgotten the old man's testimony. The victim was alone at the table. But the defense just proved at that point to be moot. The victim witnessed by Mr. Kudo was not Glenn but a fake. What? How did Mr. Kudo false testimony? Real killer poisoned the victim. Yeah. This killed an act out for Sharon. Yeah. Quiet, quiet! No, I'm kidding. What will you do? This trial has been gone long enough without the obvious question being asked. Who exactly was the real killer who impersonated the victim? You say the killer murdered Glenn Edge, but then impersonated his victim in a warrant for Victor Kudo. No, please. Could have been him. He's still alive. Obviously, the killer is. Free oh. Okay, then. Well, well, witness. Now that's cute. You think you could pin this on the tiger? Maybe you don't understand. The tiger is the king of the jungle. So I dare you to say it again. Come on, you got the goods! You can't threaten me, Mr. Tigre. It's the defense. Go ahead, tell the witness, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Mr. Wright! Sounds like to me, it must have be been you, old man! You got guts, I'll give you that! Mr. Wright, don't leave me to handle this alone! Uh, perhaps I can end this embarrassment. Mr. Gordon! Let's go back home. Here's your kudos testimony. One more time. Where's right? The old victim didn't see the victim. Oh, no, no, no. Brother, Mr. God, I'm waiting for my absence to launch your attack. Huh. Saw so your pin at last, Trent. It was in my pocket. <laughs> well, but anyways. Look who I went into. <laughs> you know, bitch, I'm just supposed to Oh, you need to wait in here from behind. You ask your point. I think the conclusion is obvious. This is Glenn. I mean, this is. 
Glenn Elge, who's really the killer in disguise. It surely it's possible the waitress was also part of the show. What? You mean the waitress was an imposter as well? The defendant, Mr. I mean Miss Bride, fell over unconscious. Also, someone used her fainting to hatch an elaborate plan to pin the murder on her. Who on earth was it? Sorry, but it was her, Violet. Who is this woman? Her name is Violet Kadavari. She's an employee of Tenderland. He was making a big mistake. She knows Violet's grandfather is. You better be going home in a Omer truck tonight if you know what I mean. Stop shaking, Nick. Where was I? Yes, the defendant, Miss Bride, has stated the following. Well, when I took the coffee over to the victim's table, it's true there was another customer in the restaurant. Um, she was sort of creepy. She had kind of a cackling laugh. <laughs> there is too many contradictions in this case. Sick man at the victim's table who nobody but Miss Bryce you can see. She was warned by the victim in the left ear when that eardrum was ruptured. The radio show you have been listening to half an hour late. It was over. There's only one logical explanation that cleans up this whole contract. Contradiction. He isn't it took place twice. Once for real and once for show. And Mr. Furio uh, Tigre, the only person who could have committed the crime was... Is you. <laughs> That's cute. S sorry? You right I mean alright. I could I could do with the guy like you around. What do you mean? Okay. I'm on this game. I'm gonna have to charter a jet to make me me. Me, take, to get me to my main map. But I'm gonna give you one more thing to think about before I go. Something to think about? You just got it all wrapped up. Nice, huh, right? But you just missed out one real important thing. But that can't be. I was in the joint that day, and I met that kid too. But I couldn't have poisoned him, you see? What? You really believe us? I mean, one of the expect us to believe now? Huh. What a troublemaker. Troublemaker? Looks like we're going to need another one for the road. One more state I mean, steaming cup of hot testimony. Indeed. When is you will explain yourself to the court. We'll give you one more chance to testify. What happened to that day at Trace Ben, yourself, and the victim? I owe uh, ten thousand dollars. That day we were having a little chat. That kid hit his paycheck date. See, so anyway, tells me you got no way to pay him. I'm about to flatten this guy when he starts screaming. Yes, I won half a million bucks. He got lucky, you know, real lucky. Waitress hadn't done what she'd done to him. Everything would have been over. He has a motive. I bet that's gonna be like the thing. What's his motive? Okay, let's press.
Thanks a lot, Maya. But I guess that's fair. Nagito Kamdea. I know what Maggie quote-unquote You just intend to get the get back the ten thousand, I mean, a hundred thousand dollars that he owed you, right? I loaned the guy the cash, so that's my right. Fortunately for Mr. LG, I don't believe the ten thousand dollars what you owe. Objection! Right, right, right. What are you getting at? I don't know if I the money. Oh, the money. Lender was after money, but a money in a totally different language. The kind of money that a single disc like this would fetch. Uh, what is that? A computer virus, Your Honor. A virus called MC Bomber. A computer virus? What does one of those do? A computer virus is a program that wrecks havoc on the inside of the computer. Peter, what do one of those do? I guess the beard isn't the only part of the desire that is from the Stone Age. I'll explain to you later, Your Honor. Right now, this is important point. Virus like MC Bomber would have be worth several millions on the black market. Several millions? Any money with no hope of ever seeing repayment would normally be bad for business. But in this case, the very fact that Glenn had no way to repay his money is crucial. What? Glenn was a programmer, a highly skilled programmer. The skill was the collateral Mr. Edge. LG put up in order to borrow the money. Objection. You're trying to suggest the witness motive was to get a hold of that program? Exactly. <laughs> the witness may have a poor fashion sense, but he's no, by no means an idiot. Right? A man like him would only get hands on one million dollars without restoring to a he resorted to a murder. Of course he would. Prove that he had time. 
What if he had needed the money right then? When the pressure's on, the luxury of choice tends to disappear. Seems you have a logical conclusion for this theory, with Mr. Wright. Would you care to share it with us? Why did I give me tune of a million dollars? Medical bills. In December of last year, you found yourself in need of a lot, huge amount of money. About six months ago, you were involved in a traffic accident, weren't you? An accident involving a car crash and a scooter in which a young woman was injured. She was taken to the hospital in where she underwent surgery. How much does do you know? These medical papers documented the treatment of the young woman in question. According to these, her operation cost one million dollars. And yet, when the payment due last month, you still managed to pay them full. One million dollars? A preposterous sum. Someone should sue those a uh, HMOs. Huh. No one would pay a bill like that. The medical association got wind of this, the hospital would end up as dead as a morgue. But Mr. Tigre had no choice but to pay, because his own life depended on it. <laughs> order, order, order. You say his life depends on it, Mr. Wright? Indeed. Simply because of the injured woman with none other than Viola Cavadari. Cadavari. You're saying, I mean, did you say Cavadari? Had a very uh, cavernini, cavernini, I know, cavadari, cavadari. Bruto cavadari, uh, mob boss in charge of all of these underworld activities in the city, and doing grandfather to his precious Viola, also known as Viola Cavadari. <laughs> Your life was in danger unless you did. I mean, you paid compensation, to boss. Correct? It only makes sense. You were desperate to acquire the one Virto Kevindori the man. So desperate in the fact that you did by the sacrifice Glenn to pay off your debt. On the day of the murder, Harry sold intentions to get his hand on the CD. We had no way of paying back the ten hundred thousand dollars. I mean one hundred thousand dollars. Then a miracle happened. That kind, I mean, the kind that Mr. Tigre would prefer to say never happened, but he can't, and neither can I. The lottery win? Exactly. At the 11th hour, Mr. Elge won half a million dollars of the lottery. Which left Mr. Tigre with no way of getting his hands on that all-important CD. At least, in a legitimate way. Ooh. Don't restore it to illegitimate ones. Uh, that's crazy! He murdered uh, uh, Glenn Elge and then made its next move to frame Maggie Bride for the crime. Mr. T. Gray posed as Glenn Elge while Viola Kevindari played the role of Miss Bride. And then they reenacted the whole scene in order to establish a waitress. I mean, what, I mean, the witness being the one who was there testified, I mean, who all heard testified yesterday, Mr. Victor Kudo. Objection. Like I said, Christ, that's crazy. No one could pull off the stuff like that. For starters, there's no way the chef would keep in the dark about it. Objection! But Mr. Armstrong was in on it from the very beginning. Have you forgotten already, Mr. Garnett? Mr. Armstrong owed the money, too. Half a million dollars, in fact. He had no choice but to go along with Mr. Tiger, I mean, Tigre's plan. Order, order. <laughs> you do put, I mean, you put on a good show, Spikey. If you want to stay alive in the Lone Shark business, you gotta be careful. You saying I dressed up like that kid created a witness and framed someone. If I did something crazy like that, I'd leave a trail as bright as my shirt. I ain't dumb enough to do something sloppy like that. I agree. You, you do. Despite your appearance, you are very careful. That's why you took one more precaution. One more trick to make sure Bright had no way out. What? Another one? Pro uh, Mr. Wright? Interesting. Why don't you fill us all in, Trite? 
What was the trick that he, that he used to perform the framed accusation? What on earth is that? That's an insult to think anyone could be foolish by such a childish imitation. Consider yourself insulted, Your Honor. Mr. Tigre, you didn't just pose as a victim on the day in question. A month ago in this very court, you posed as me. What? That, that's the truth. But the witness looks nothing like you, Mr. Wright. Although, now that I think about it, it was you, wasn't it? Uh, no doubt it was you, standing there here this very moment, a mere month ago. The Phoenix Wright who put the most disrupt, I mean, disreputable, shabby defense I've ever seen. Can you prove that, Gramps? Prove the attorney who represented that accused here a month ago was this man. Are you prepared to take the stand and testify that it was him? Mm. Yeah. For forgive me about that, yeah? I would do something like that. Not me. You, you made a mistake. It was someone else, huh? Have you no pride, sir? Oh, Jesus. Oh, I'm sweating. It's getting so intense in here. This isn't a matter of pride. In case you didn't know, try here in court, we deal with other people's lives. Mm -hmm. Your God is right. Your Honor, speaking for myself, I am absolutely convinced. The attorney in question was the witness standing or, I preside over this as a judge. Someone in my position cannot be swayed by a memory without evidence to support it. No, come on. Gumshoe, come in! And no. Or will now be the witness. But we come so far. You say he impersonated Glenn Elge. You say he impersonated you. But there's nothing that adds up to a murder charge. You don't have a shred of evidence that the witness poisoned the victim's coffee. HA! Sucks to be you, right? Don't mess with the tiger or you're gonna get bald, you've got that! Oh, all we managed to do here was chase him around a bit. So close to getting him to admit his own guilt. <laughs> oh, righty poo. Looks like I don't need be needing a real f a refill. Uh -huh. Honor, sir? Yeah! Gumshoe! Detective Gumshoe! Sorry, it took so long, pal. I, 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 I saved out everything on this. I patched this, the works. So here it is, my heart counting on this, too. What is it, Detective? Isn't it obvious, pal? It's the final decisive piece of evidence. What? Sorry it took so long, pal, but I finally got the results from the lab. The results? About the prince, pal! Oh, so, do you know who the prince belonged to? You think I have some kind of hack to taste? Well, of course I know. So, tell us, tell us... Heh <laughs> you bet. There's crystal. It's all over the bottom. There's... Yes! What if he used it too? Um, Detective Gumshoe? Maggie! You've been working on something for me? Sorry I let you down, Maggie. I know you didn't do it. 
I'm a detective. We're supposed to be able to prove stuff like that. Real sorry. I'll get out of here now. Detective Gumshoe, wait. Victims, Your Honor, naturally the court is already aware of the contents of this bottle. However, interesting new information has come to light. We have cleared some fingerprints on it. But Mr. Wright, what conclusion are you holding a draw for this? Has come to taste it. It contains cyanide. Potassium cyanide? The poison used to murder him? He used this very bottle. Mm. And on this bottle, Mr. T. Graves, I mean, Mr. T. Gray, we found your fingerprints. Well, how do you explain it? Ah, uh, you'd be making a good clown. You know that? What? You ain't gonna never gonna stick to it. You just making me laugh now. You think a cheap bluff like that's gonna fool the tiger? Bluff? Did you just reveal what the poison- You idiot! Got him, at last. What? <laughs> you know- we make fun of Dong and Rafa for doing that shit with Mondo Iwata's case when they're like, Oh, I'd never wear your fucking blue jacket. This fucking guy pulled a Mondo Iwata. Is that the bottle you're referring to? Yeah, that's it. That's the bottle with the sign on it. Because you ain't gonna find the prince. You still have it figured out? Now you realize what you just said, you e. What? I said, what did I just say? No, no, you gotta go to jail now. Thank you. 
Wow. He... You goober! <laughs> nice. One big mistake? What a fucking idiot! How do you... You! you that was it. your fault, okay? I think everybody can agree with that. That was his fault. That's so stupid. That's so funny, too, so I don't really give a shit. This is awesome. Great trial right here. Loved it. Not guilty. Yeah, he saved us. Oh, the food! Freedom. Fuck yeah, dude. That was a great trial. Nice. What the? I'm so happy about this trial, dude. That was a great trial. And next time we're going to Turnabout Beginnings. That will be the next episode. Which is only two parts, so we'll be able to knock them out in two parts, of course. Um, don't have a lot more to say other than thank you all for watching. This has been a great playthrough so far. Really? I don't think we have... I'm going to look at see how much longer we have, but I don't think it's that much. Mm. By the way, only had to use strategy wiki one time. Can't believe that. Um... We only have two, four, six, eight, ten. We only have 11 more parts to go, so. 23 parts, damn. So, yeah, that's it for uh, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Trials and Tribulations. If you like it, please like and subscribe. Please also go and vote on the voting poll, because I know that'll still be up by the time this is up. Uh, you only have until the 29th. And also. Go watch my other playthroughs. I have played all the Finks Right game, which is now all in one beautiful playlist for your uh, convenience. So then you don't have to kind of scurry around and try finding all the different playlists. If you like Finks Right Ace Attorney, comment what, uh, what game I should do next, aka Apollo Justice, or maybe the Miles Edgeworth game. But I might just go straight to Apollo Justice. Um, if you guys have any suggestions for any other visual novels, such as the, another Dong and Rampa game, or. Uh, the Family Cop Detective series, please let me know down below as I would like to see and give them a try. Um, but for now, my name's Evil Spirit, and I am signing out. Goodbye, everybody.